So um, what we're going to do now, for those of you who didn't have a, an opportunity to introduce yourself, sincere apologies, I underestimated the time. But um, what we're going to do now, I'm just trying to uh, bring up uh, the key, remind you of the key discussion points. So we are going to basically go into working groups. I just need to double check how many um, participants we have online in the group. I think we probably have enough for two groups. Um, and then what we're going to do is use the Jamboards um, to discuss the following three questions. And I'm just going to um, share my screen so everybody can see. Second, here we go. Okay, so we'll just basically be talking. First of all, we'll take uh, in your small groups, it would be great if you can basically take, uh, let's say, I think it's 10 minutes per question. Uh, Katerina, you can maybe just confirm the amount of time that they have for this working group when I, when I finish speaking. But basically we have three questions. What's working well in your sector? What are the key challenges you face in your in in the sector and what are the key priorities uh, for the sector that we should focus on so really trying to and the objective of this is that each of you each of the groups will aim to come up with a number of key priorities i'll be floating around between the different working groups to explain um, and to move you through um, and then we'll be using the jam boards to really try to identify um, the responses to those key questions. So it'd be great if you can kind of um, identify when you get in a group, it would be great if you can identify a reporter. So somebody who can take notes on the Jamboard while the discussion is happening. And then just make sure that you wrap up one question before you move to the next question. I think that's it. Okay, great. Um, would you mind uh, stopping your share screen just for a moment? Yep. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, just for you guys, as we have been using Google Slides um, for the majority of this, just in case you're not familiar with Jamboard, um, I'm going to send you a link in the chat. And that link is going to have a link to then when you're in your breakout rooms, it will either be breakout room one or breakout room two. You click the corresponding Jamboard link that corresponds to that. And when you click on it, it's going to take you to this page here. So for the first 10 minutes, you'll be able to answer this first question. Then I'll send you a message that will appear at the top of your screen saying if you haven't yet please move on to question two and to do that you just click this little arrow at the top uh, to move to the next question uh, once you're here you'll have 10 minutes again and then again to question three then we'll all come back together and i'll hand back over to amanda to discuss yeah hopefully that so makes sense <laughs> yeah, and ideally, thank you. Ideally, before you move on, as you see with each question, you're identified, you're supposed to have a brainstorming in your small groups, and then out of that brainstorming, identify three key priorities that you would like to share back. So just to keep an eye on the time, because at one, you know, you need to make sure that you're able to have that brainstorming. And then once you get to the end, identify your top three um, priorities that you would like to highlight. Fantastic. Correct, Ken? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so I've just shared the questions just so you have them again, but they will be on the Jamboards in the chat, as well as that link to the Google document. Uh, please do click that. However, you, will, um, you won't know which breakout room you're in just at the moment um, because I'm assigning you here. Uh, so please hold tight and I'll pop you into your breakout rooms. Amanda, if you'd like, um, just pop back to me and I can kind of assign you every once in a while to different rooms to help facilitate discussion. Great, thanks. And we'll have three groups, right, Kat? Oh, sorry, three groups? Yeah, not a problem at all. Two or three? Um, mm -hmm. I think three would be a good number because that would be about eight in each room. Okay, perfect. Great, sounds good. I'll send everyone in now. See you soon. Just taking a look here. Great. It looks like everybody's back. Thank you so much. I hope you had some great discussions. Um, I've just shared a quick link in the chat. Um, it's just a quick Mentimeter poll if you can do that while we're facilitating our discussions here. Um, I will also ask um, that while Amanda has the floor, everyone uh, keeps themselves on mute. And then when she calls upon groups to speak, um, please just unmute yourself if it's your turn to speak. Um, but for the time being, I will pass on to Amanda. Thank you.
Great. Okay. Thanks, everyone. So um, while you were doing all of your good work in the small groups, I was uh, attempting to summarize uh, and cut and paste all the work that you were putting on the Jamboards in, into one thing. So what I suggest we do is we just hear from one group about um, what were some of the, the good, uh, what is working well. And then we'll move to, so group one, we'll ask to hear what you said about what's working well. Um, group two will ask you to highlight some of the challenges and then we'll spend most of the time discussing together um, on the key priorities. So if we could just hand over to group one to highlight some of the, the um, what's working well and I'll display what I was able to capture. Um, over who would be wanting to present from group one? Sorry, that's my cat. Group one? Colin will present. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say you, William. <laughs> I can see you agreed beforehand, right? <laughs> we did not. Okay. Well, no, no, she, 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 she was, uh, she was, uh, you know, taking out no facilitating. So. <laughs> okay. Could, yeah. So, Colin, ahead, can Colin. I hand over to you? Just, you know, highlights. Maybe, you know, three or four highlights. Of what is going well. Correct. I'm going to try to remember. Uh, we talked about many things. Um, I think what our group said is working well is um, really around the recognition um, of the need to uh, integrate within other sectors. This was a key point that came up quite a bit. So definitely the need to do so and the need to collaborate with other sectors was highlighted. Um, not that we've achieved that, but I think the, that kind of discussion was important that we need to move in that direction. Um, William, can you help me with the second one? <laughs> so I just put in the chat a uh, summary okay. of some of the key points, but go ahead, William. Yeah, I think we also agree that one, one, one thing that is going very well is the fact that as a sector, we have been able to develop standards, procedures, tools. Mm -hmm. We are now able to measure child protection, which we could not do 10 years ago. So I think for us, I think this question of standardizing in terms of developing two standards, procedures, now you can measure child protection, even if you're in Colombia or you are in Africa, and you will see the same message. We think that is going really very well. And the CPMS is a great tool for that. Exactly. So we thought that's, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Okay, great. So um, you'll see here, I'm not going to go through the, all the other groups in the interest of time, but you'll see here I managed to collate some of those key um, recommendations uh, in terms of I'd, what's working well. Um, I think the, the humanitarian development nexus was another area that some of the other groups worked on. Um, and I identified as, as, a, as, a, as a good practice as what's working well. Um, and then I think there was a lot of discussion and, and many of the groups highlighted the importance of um, collaboration and how actually the COVID provided us an, an opportunity to even strengthen and not only to strengthen the collaboration um, within ourselves, but also with other sectors and also um, across the humanitarian development nexus. So that was really seen as quite an, uh, a good practice. And then the only other thing I think that you guys didn't mention um, was the importance of the Alliance as a central platform for consolidating all of the all, all of the work. So those I think were some of the themes. I'm going to hand over to now group two, if you could highlight some of the challenges you identified. Who would like to report back from group two? I'm Lucia from group two. Go ahead, Lucia. And uh, uh, we discussed a lot about the capacity of the staff and the human resources as the, the first challenge, in particular uh, for uh, the skills, the experience and the language that is always a challenge to find the human resources and also to retain them <laughs> inside in the sector. This was um, maybe the first challenge. The second uh, challenge is uh, the access and inclusion uh, the fact that uh, in, in this uh, situation that we were living in these last months, the access to the most vulnerable was a challenge. And generally speaking, uh, uh, ensure the, the inclusion and the child participation also of uh, the most vulnerable groups. 
Uh, and the third one, uh, let me say, that is with the growth of the city sectors, other, sector, other sectors are not more mainstreaming child protection. So this is another challenge, the awareness uh, on child protection from uh, the other sectors. So these are the, the, the three. I hope that uh, I, I, I could synthesize good for the group. We are not hearing you no more, Amanda, you're close. <laughs> Sorry. Any other challenges that the other groups mentioned that were not mentioned so far? I think our group talked Amanda quite a bit about is... vocal... Sorry. Go ahead, Colleen. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, maybe to... William and I will say the same thing because we talked quite a bit about the challenge of localization. Um, you know, I think it is the era of, of localization, as Riyadh said in his remarks, but doing that in a truly meaningful way and really taking this global guidance and contextualizing it um, in a way that really does um, work for local partners and government uh, still continues to be a significant challenge. Excellent. So any other challenges that were identified by the group that weren't mentioned? I think we had group, I'm losing track. Think, of group. Amanda, there was one thing I just want to point out very quickly. We also spoke a bit about uh, adolescent programming mm. and the challenge around adolescent programming within child protection. Because in many countries, the approach is, is different in, in nearly all countries, probably within UNICEF, not probably everywhere else. But if you look within UNICEF, in some countries, it's under education, special adolescent program, and it's not clear mm -hmm. as to where child protection fits into that, mm -hmm. it just becomes a little bit. So we just thought that those specific clarity around adolescent program would be a good, uh, a good thing. Okay. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah, so we I had, we, I think Annalisa can probably copy into the the chat box but um financing mm. and inconsistencies across responses over time and under asking um within country teams and that the thing's gonna be discussed tomorrow with the unprotected report mm. yeah great okay so that's a list of, of of challenges um excellent so now we're going to move on to the priorities so can I just ask, uh, let's start with group three. What were your key priorities? And I'll try to um, capture them as we go. Go ahead, group three. You want me to go? I'm happy for somebody else to present from the group. Sorry, who's that speaking? I go ahead, see. Annalisa. Okay, so we had um, a lot. <laughs> Um, but maybe one is around, um, I might group some of these, one is around um, looking at the evidence we have and generating it if there are gaps to support both that child protection is prioritized from a funding perspective as well as kind of um, looking at the, at how, um, at strengthening the argument for the centrality of protection and that kind of intersectoral collaboration with child protection. So really looking at how we use the evidence we already have, and it, we agreed that there's a lot there, but it, we might need to generate some more, but really looking at and using that to strengthen both the funding as well as the collaboration and, and coordination across sectors. Um, we then had looking at the resource mobilization and how do we get that directly to the local partners rather than going through international regional levels so um yeah so that local actor, actors are able to receive those resources directly and how does that work um we discussed for quite a long time the the, the climate crisis and how that interlinks with the nexus so looking at embedding kind of child protection and climate resilience and response across the nexus and how how do we learn what we, the discussions that we've already had around the nexus and what we're already doing and apply those to the climate um, climate change and the climate climate resilience. Um, I think that's three, but I'm going to say one more. <laughs> um, you know, we already have a lot of approaches. So how do we, how do we, rather than continually 
generating further and further resources? How do we think about the resources and the guidance that we already have and uh, applying and, and adapting that to come to, to new contexts and new emergencies? So rather than every time something new happens, we develop further guidance. It's a question of how do we use what we have to adapt it to, 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 to new emergencies, to new contexts where we might be working. I'm sure I've missed some things, but those are the... That's, that's yeah. fine. We'll need to... Yeah, thanks a lot, Annalisa. So you were group three. Let's hear from yes. group two. Group two. Call, calling group two. Yes, yeah, so, sorry. <laughs> I was not able to open again <laughs> the micro. Uh, the, the key priorities from group two were again the coordination among sectors and we were talking about investing in partnership maybe before a crisis is coming uh, so if you have good partnership uh, you can then after coordinate and this uh, could maybe also influence policies uh, at uh, national level that uh, generally we have different policies in different sectors while we need the coordination so the, we find that, that this uh, is a priority Again, the capacity building, uh, in particular also of uh, uh, local organization and uh, volunteers at community level. So the level of capacity building and building the workforce, not only for us, uh, but for the community, the civil society, and then also for the international organization. And the third one, I mean, it's very much linked to what we were saying before, is uh, uh, the access and the inclusion, so address uh, in inequity of technology uh, in order not to leave no one behind. Thank you. Okay. Um, could you just maybe expand on that last point, because the other ones were quite clear. Could you just say a few words about what that recommendation priority meant? This of the, the address the inequity of technology? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, I, I think that is a point of discussion. I have my, my own, my own point of view is not to use technology, but to use the direct relationship with people. And so to increase, for instance, the possibility of having the PPI for all our staff and to go around it, to find a way to be safe in order to, uh, to access uh, the beneficiaries but this is my own opinion that was not very much accepted yesterday so i take the opportunity to say it <laughs> now but uh, but the others were uh, talking again about the fact that uh, the inequity that we have uh, is uh, something to to be looked uh, in i mean we have to look inside it uh, in order to find a way to uh, to reach everybody and in particularly the most vulnerable Okay, thank you very much. Let's hear, I just want to turn to group one, is there anything that hasn't been said so far that you discussed as a priority? Because we need to rank them. Sorry, group Colleen, one. if you tried to say something, you were muted. I think the main thing that I don't see represented there is the point around intersectoral work. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be one of the main points from our group that we'd like to see included. Okay, great. Okay, so what we're going to do now, now you can see the eight options of priorities. I am going to ask everybody to pick three. And in the chat, you have to put your name and what your three priorities are out of this list of eight. So we are not using Mentimeter, we are using the chat, like Zoom chat. Yeah, the Zoom chat. Um, so basically what we need to do is, and the reason I'm doing this is that we need to identify out of this eight list, a list of how many, Katerina, we're supposed to identify three, right? Uh, three to five, um, okay. but I think I think if you're doing it in the chat, it's definitely easier to just identify maybe everyone's top three. Yeah. So if you can just put your name, so and your top three in the chat, and from that we will democratically select our three priorities, and then we can go and have a cup of coffee. Should we just put a number, Amanda? So just put the number. As you can see, colleagues are already doing that. You just put the number. 
if I if we could have been quick enough to pop these in a Mentimeter, we would have had a Mentimeter, but I'm not yet that quick in technology. Okay, so I see everybody. So I just give everybody, I see that we have one, yeah, everybody's still finishing. Okay, so. Just going to scroll back up so we can see. You might need, if those of you who haven't voted, just scroll back up and you'll see it. And just take a few more minutes. Okay, and so while um, everyone's finishing this, what we're going to do uh, as a result of this is that uh, Katerina and I will do the maths and we'll select from, we'll, we'll have the full list. Um, We'll, full, we'll have the full list and be able to present that, but out of that we'll, we'll be able to identify um, the three priorities. Um, we have, how many minutes do we have, Katerina? Two. <laughs> Two, okay. So I guess it would just be, um, uh, in fact, we're kind of done. I think the only thing that we could uh, say to everybody is if you feel like you want to make a pitch that one of the issues really absolutely have to be there, you have two minutes for your soapbox. So anybody who wants to take the floor, we have a moment. Did I uh, intimidate ever? I mean, this group is not an intimidated, easily intimidated group. So I'm sure that there'll be somebody who wants to, to, to make a pitch for one of the issues. Maybe what I can do, if nobody wants to do that, I can just share my screen and show the, and show the one issue actually that seemed to come out, which wasn't mentioned. Um, there were a couple of issues here that were not mentioned in the debrief that I captured. Um, one was um, identifying cost-effective uh, measures for child protection programming. And the other was looking at the accountability of government. So those were two things I didn't hear come out, but uh, we can add them to the debrief when we... Is there anyone who would like to debrief on behalf of the group in the larger? Do I have any volunteers? Can I just, uh, in, in the list of evidence generation, to use um, protest protect, protection and the centrality we did have the cost effectiveness was in that uh, okay. the evidence generation and the it was basically about the case for support including okay. evidence cost effectiveness so that could be if that that, okay. that could be included I'll, I'll merge that there thank you great well i think um we will do the maths and we'll see you so katarina what do we what's the next step you'll have to remind me that's all right so um in in 10 minutes. Give me two seconds to look at my schedule. Uh, no, sorry, we have a half an hour break. Um, so in 30 minutes on the 40, um, you'll need to be back in the main plenary room, the one that we were in before. Um, so my best suggestion is um, just shut down Zoom here, um, head back to Kiko Chat, have your half an hour break, and ideally about five minutes before, just to ensure that you're there and ready to go, uh, that we have you back in and we'll start on time on the 40 with everybody. Um, so please, depending on your time zone, grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea, glass of water, go for a nice run or have a yoga class, whichever you prefer, um, and we'll see you guys in half an hour.